it's not fake until you make it. It's like you gotta put yourself out there and do the thing. And and if people believe in you, then you just, you just gotta stay humble and still like recognize yeah. where you're at and where you want to go to. So yeah. uh, that was a really really cool experience. And then doing the same thing and leveling up again, where uh, Justin worked with the bounce mm -hmm. and he was like, we need to take this out of the underground. So let me try to put together a package that puts house music on mainstream radio. And the bounce is not even. I think it was, it was 91.7 at the time. Yeah. So I got a sticker somewhere yeah, in my room. Yeah, exactly. So 91.7 is always mainstream radio. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. It's a top 40 yeah. radio station. Yeah. So he put together a package, built together a sponsorship, and we ended up getting the Friday 11 to 1 o'clock slot. Oh, live oh wow. That's fucking crazy. With like Nestor, Nestor Delano, yeah. uh, Luke Morrison, and then we ended up bringing like Mikey Wong and Dustin oh, Cruz dope, and, yeah. and other guys up through the ranks to as like Luke moved on to Calgary and stuff. And mm. And it was just one of those things where it never existed before. You yeah, know, oh. you putting electronic music on mainstream radio, the, in Alberta especially, yeah, it didn't just happen. didn't exist. Yeah. And it got so positive and so so amazing that we ended up getting a second club night across the street because they also went fluid. And that was a 100-person venue across the street. And, uh, you know, don't mind me bragging about the Maybe you Maybe you got to say it, man. And it was like, we... They were like, yo, we got 200 people in Lina. Mm -hmm. There's only 100 people capacity across the street. How about you guys just do something there? And we'll just like take their money while they're in line. Exactly. You know I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we'll just even make it a queue, right? So uh, that's how smart. businesses yeah. should work. Yeah, but clubs, yeah. you know? Yeah, it works together. And it yeah. really had the foresight to do it. They invested mm -hmm. in us and they took risks with us. And mm. it wasn't free. We worked hard, uh, you know, and we didn't make as much money as maybe we we should have in mm. hindsight but right. nobody was taking advantage of anybody we're all like working hard together and that's awesome uh, to build these partnerships and it was it was really really amazing to see what we could do and we went from like you know the, the standard stuff was crazy mm. like you know you know booking fucking everybody there from like those guys to like sasha to digweed these guys are like call cox we had there oh my god like, these what are the <laughs> holy world. fuck like, <laughs> yeah. like cascade played for my birthday Holy I'm shit. I'm trying to sell the owners of like, yo, we could book this guy Cascade right. from LA. And they're like, or I think he was even in Chicago at the time. And they're like, $1,500 is too much. I'm like, listen, it's my birthday. You yeah. know, I can bring out three, 400 people. So let's just do it. And they're like, okay, we did it. And that was like, Cascade's like, yo, this is crazy. And then I ended up, we booked him for like five years straight. That's sick. Wow. You just built a relationship yeah, just yeah, off that one party. He still, he still reaches out and says happy birthday. I love that. Man. You know, and like, uh, being able to do that sort of stuff and, and really build the scene. And then when we went downtown, mm -hmm. we we couldn't bring in other DJs because whenever we did, like Cascade came and played and did some stuff. But like and all, some of these other ones, they're just not selling tickets on the night we already do business. Uh, so, uh, you know, we end up, Justin did a great job of getting some extra sponsors and we end up syndicating uh, the Pitong Essential Mix oh, on shit. the bounce as well. That's dope. So mm -hmm. that would be, that was another show that would uh, was on the bounce. So again, That's way, this is crazy. like, 2005 maybe you guys were so, pushing yeah we were pushing yeah. thank god that you're saying this because like yeah. people like people don't know this Something, man yeah, people have no idea it, literally and well, all if you're born in 2004 well, you're in the club now right yeah, yeah i think yeah, so, somewhere around right? there right so, yeah, yeah. So I was, they're you know, just on the cusp before they were even born so exactly I, I don't get like i get it it's not like a bad thing you know other people mm. are doing great things like blair and sal and jay were doing killer stuff over at the bower mm -hmm. you know Veet was still doing amazing events he built a club called Escape at West Ed where the joint was yes, and they did tons of stuff. We did parties out there. Um, and it was just like, for us, we just were really, really stoked that it became like a, a local culture thing. And it wasn't just about like, sure, we leverage brands. Heineken was a big sponsor for us. Red right. Bull was a big sponsor for us. Um, but it was just about like really getting the message out there and changing Edmonton for the better. We'd mm -hmm. go to like, at the time where like local is on Jazz Brab, it was Joey's. Mm. And it was the coolest spot downtown. Right. Like you line up every night. It was like Cactus Club when it opened. Right. And we'd walk in, and not only would they like move us past the whole line and do everything, which we didn't really ask, but they'd go put on the house music station. Wow. Like, yo, put it on. Like, yo, I'm trying to get to that level. 